2 Kings chapter 3. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel, north, in Samaria, that's their capital. The 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, that's down south, and reigned 12 years. And he, Jehoram, not Jehoshaphat, wrought evil in the sight of the Lord. That's common up north in Israel. But not like his father, Ahab. Not like his mother, Jezebel. For he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Oh, a little extra information. Here's Baal, the worship of Jezebel. And we learn that Ahab made an image of him, made a picture of him. I wonder what that image would look like. I mean, would that be the image of what people see Jesus as today? An image is, is a picture. Uh, when Jesus says, hand me the coin, he said, whose image is on it? Well, the head of, of Herod. So they had pictures of their gods back then. That his father had made. So not only did Jezebel bring Baal, but Ahab brought pictures. Nevertheless, he cleaved. That's the first time that word shows up. Cleaved. Joined to. Unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. That's the first ruler, the first king of uh, Israel north. That's the golden calves. That's the priest that he made up. That's the priest that, that he came up with. That's their feast days and imitation to God. That's still going. And Jehoram has adopted that religion over the religion of his parents. Which made Israel to sin. And he departed not therefrom. So he stayed with Jeroboam's calves and worship and religion. And Mesia, or Misa, Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep master. That's the only place that word shows up, sheep master. And rendered unto the king a hundred thousand lambs, a hundred thousand rams, with the wool. So, I don't know if the sheep were completely ready to be fleeced, or he fleeced the sheep and brought their wool with them. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So there's the tributary of Moab and Israel done after Ahab died. And King Jehoram, Jehoram went out of Samaria the same time and numbered all Israel. So here's a poll. It was a sin for David. And he went and sent to Je Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, Here's north and south. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Wilt thou go with me against Moab to battle? I need your help. He said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. Well, let's run to 1 Kings 22 verse 4. 1 Kings 22 verse 4. And we'll do verse 3. 3 and 4. And the king of Israel, this would be Ahab, said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth of Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. So here's a battle with Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people my horses as thy horses so here's Jehoshaphat he's working with the idolatry he's working with the religious he's working with the evil people of north he shouldn't be but he's done it twice now unto the father Ahab now to the son he this and speaks the same thing my people as thy people and my horses as thy horses Almost like he's done this not only that time, but it's quite frequent. He's joined alliances, it looks like. And he said, 
which way shall we go up? And he answered the way through the wilderness of Edom. This is going to be the battle tactics, the map. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. You realize the family brawl we have here? Israel and Judah are of Ape, uh, let me go back. Are of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. Though Israel and Judah are at odds each other as far as God Jehovah. Now Edom has come into play, and Edom is the brother to Jacob, who also doesn't like the Jews, the Israelites. But here they are joining both halves of Israel, north and south. And they're going to battle against Moab. Moab is of Lot. And Lot is of the family of Abraham. These are all kin. They're families. And they're getting this big battle together. And they fetch a compass. That means go around. You can take a compass and you make a round circle. Seven days journey. That's about 100 miles. Plus or minus. So they're going to circle a 100 mile uh, circumference or radius of the enemy. And there was no water for, for the host and for the cattle that followed them. Well, you need water to survive. You need air, water, food, and light. Well, where's the food? It's right there with the cattle. Notice in the old ages, and if I can say like the ancient times, the Old Testament, they didn't care, I mean, they didn't have refrigeration. They would salt their meat. But we need food for the troops, so what do we do? We bring cattle. The cattle are coming with us, and when we need to, for beef, we will slaughter the animals. There was a way for the Jews to slaughter those animals. Make sure there's no blood. So here comes the meat with them. But we just don't have no water for anybody. The animals and for the people. And you guys survive around water. This is this is a battle tactic. You know, which route should we take? Well, we'll take the wilderness of Edom. Well, that's the wrong place to go. You just ran yourself into where there's no water. And the king of Israel said, Alas. That the Lord has called these three kings of Orient Point. Here's three kings. And I only said that three kings of Orient Point. If it's mentioned here, T H R E E K I N G S, if it's here where we're reading right now, you would think that God in Luke chapter 2 would have wrote, all right, T H R E E K I N G S. Three kings. The three is missing in Luke chapter 2. You can find one, you can find two, you can find three, you can find seven, you can find five, you can find a hundred, you can find a thousand in the Bible. But Luke chapter 2, you do not see what we see here, three kings. There you go. We don't know how many. God does not want us to know. Together, to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And those three kings would be Israel, Judah, and Edom. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord? Let's check out 1 Kings 22, verse 7. And when we check out 1 Kings 22, 7, and Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord? Jehoshaphat's not stupid. He knows who Ahab had for those prophets that were prophesying. He knows where Jehoram is standing. He's not standing with the God of Jehovah of Jerusalem. And Jehoshaphat says, listen, okay, I'll join you. I'll help you, my brother. But we're lacking somebody here amongst his crew. And who are we lacking? Both your father and you. We're lacking Jehovah. Now shut these prophets up, he told Ahab. There's no other prophets here now. Right now, it's, hey, listen, you know what? He got thinking. There's no water. Maybe I'm out of the will of God right now. All right, Jehoram. I want to 
Before we go anywhere else, I want to know what God says about this. And he done this with Ahab. And the prophet that God brought to him, Micaiah, Micaiah, last time we left him, he's he's going to jail. He says, listen, if that king Ahab comes back alive, I didn't speak. He may be still in jail as far as we know. So not knowing what happened to what it, Micaiah, Jehoshaphat stands up again. I want a prophet of the Lord. Is he thinking about Micaiah? That's the last time it happened. Is he maybe, you know what? You bring that guy forth, maybe he's in jail. I don't know. It doesn't say who. He just says, listen. Uh, Verse 11. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet, no name of the Lord? We don't know who he's thinking about. That we may inquire of the Lord, that's Jehovah, by him. And one of the kings of Israel's servants, not the king. Now go back over here, chapter 2, 22, verse 7 again, 1 Kings. Verse 8. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Micaiah. The king knew. He said, okay, I know a prophet of Jehovah, but I hate him. Jehoram doesn't know any man. His servants are going to step up. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Jehoshaphat king. I know somebody. And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha. Uh-oh, here he is. The son of Shaphat. Which poured water on the hands of Elijah. What's that mean? I have no idea. That poured water... That's the only place ever shows up in the Bible. Nowhere else has that showed up. A lot of speculation and a wash the hands. And nothing. That's the only place to see in the Bible. Ford water. And Jehoshaphat said, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it means. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, and the king of Edom went down to him. Here comes three kings. To a prophet. And Elijah said to the king of Israel. What have I to do with thee? <laughs> what are you doing here? You don't represent Jehovah. You got the golden calves. Get out of here. Shut up. You never come to me. You don't even know who I am. Get thee to the prophets of thy father. Oh. So Jehoram still has left Baal. But he has those prophets of the golden calves set up by Jeroboam, which are no prophets at all, which are hired priests. And to the prophets of thy mother. <coughs> excuse me. That is, that's the Baal prophet. He left his father and mother's religion. For the golden calves, and yet he brought the prophets and he brought the men of Baal. That's what religion does for you. That's what the church has done in history through the book of Revelation. We have adopted the ways of the Catholic Church so we can make peace. But we're Christians in a Christian church. Well, what's that tree you got at the end of the year? Well, it's a holiday tree. It's a Christmas tree. No, it's a bale bush. What is this thing you got trunk or tree at the end of October? Well, you know, it's for the kitties. It makes them happy. No, it's Halloween. It's the celebration of death. All Saints Day. What is this Easter rabbit that you have at the at the springtime? Well, that's, you know, the spring, that's Jesus. No, that's Esther. And that's past. I mean, that's not that's Easter in the book of Acts. That's not Passover. I can't find no eggs and, and Easter bunnies and, and rabbits and all that in the, in the law. So what you see here is you see Jehoram. He's got a perfect day of what the church is today. Oh, I skipped that religion. But I have all the rudiments, the rudiments, 
and the remnants of those religions. And that's in churches today. You still got him doing it's still going to be singing this time of season. These carols, which were written by the Catholic Church, written in Latin, and they have no business to be on the lips of pure Christians. Trees and bunnies and all the religion. That's exactly what G. Horam has right now. Oh, I got rid of that, but I, you know, I kept the do that. I, I don't serve Baal, but I go up in the attic and I bring the boxes of decorations of the of the religion. That's what he's doing. And this is the word of Elijah. He's not going to lie. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord Jehovah has called these three kings to gather to deliver them unto the hand of Moab. You think, jo you think uh, Jehoshaphat is buying that? Jehoshaphat says, hey, I want to speak to the prophet of the Lord. Nowhere do we read in this chapter. As soon as Moab rebels, he, he numbers Israel. The law said not to. David got in trouble for that. And he calls up these, I don't know how they do it, but he calls up these, uh, Jehoshaphat and says, hey, I need help. Jehoshaphat said, okay, I'll help you. We'll go the way of the Edom. Oh, okay, let's call up the Edomite. Uh, King of Edom, will you help me? I don't see no calling on God. So what he's doing before Elijah right now, he's lying to Elijah. For the Lord has called these three kings together and to deliver them and deliver on, into the hand of Moab. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, there's an oath, be whom I stand... <laughs> He didn't say we. He didn't say you, thy, or thee. I stand. Addressing the king of Israel saying, I stand before God, Jehovah. You don't. Surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Israel, uh, Judah, excuse me, I would not look toward thee nor see, see thee. All right, there's three men standing there before Elijah. If that man right there, Jehoshaphat, wasn't standing right here right now, I wouldn't even give you the time of day. I'd get out of here, I'll tell you. Scram. He died. I'd go back inside, close the door, and we have nothing to do with you. But since Jehoshaphat does honor the Lord Jehovah, does do right with God, okay, for him, Jehoshaphat becomes a type of Jesus Christ. Because in the presence of God, I'm a sinner. I am wicked. I'm unrighteous. And if it wasn't for the presence of Jesus Christ, I would have no regard for God to have any dealing with me at all. I would not look toward thee nor see thee. Now bring me a mistral. That's there's one other place here, mistral. Coming up. There's only two places in the Bible that shows up, mistral. At the end of the next sentence. And it came to pass when the minstrel played. It's the only two places. Minstrel. It's a singer or a musician. Almost like David. The hand of the Lord came upon him. So he said, bring me the minstrel. He starts playing his instrument or singing. And God said, Elijah, here's what I got for you. We see music today being used for Satan. All over the world. Today, Satan's music doesn't bring the word of God. It brings sexual gesture. It brings the mood to do uh, illegal drugs. It does the thing. Let's have more beer. Let's have more music and have more at, at the bar. Let's have more partying. Let's have more NXT. Let's have more junk. That's Satan's music. God's music, true classical music written by the right composers, true hymns would be... It makes you just think of the Word of God. Handel's Messiah, perfect, all scripture. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. That's the first time, only time, ditches shows up. That'll give me a lot of work. Just start making little holes in the ground. For thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind. 
Now, when in Palestine were it company rain, you shall not see rain. There's going to be no forecast, oh, it's going to rain today. You're not going to see it. Yet the valley shall be filled with water. Remember, that's the whole problem. We ain't got water. That you may drink, both ye and your cattle, and your beasts. The thirst. And this is but a light thing in the in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. Now remember, this is all because of Jehoshaphat. This is not Jehoram. God said, hey, if you weren't here, Elijah said, if you weren't, I wouldn't even talk to you. But Jehoshaphat. And you shall smite every fenced city. So America, go ahead and build your fence, your fence cities. If God's against you, he'll destroy them. A fence city is not a protection against God. In every choice city, the, 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 the popular, the well-known cities, the, the great cities, and shall fell, cut down every good tree. Good trees would be fruit and nut trees. A tree that would produce something that you can use. Fir tree. For wood. And stop all wells of water. Don't let there be any running water. And mar every good piece of land with stone. Where you can farm. Where you can settle. Throw rocks into that ground. Make it a rocky soil. So you're going to make this area barren. It shall come to pass in the morning. Like of the second advent, when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom. And it doesn't tell us how the water, I mean, did it come whooshing through? Did it come from the sky? Did it come from up? It just says water by the way of Edom. And the country was filled with water, a kind of flooding. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor and upward, any age, and if you are physically fit, you got ready for battle. And stood in the border. Not coming across this line. Cross this line, we're going to get you. We're expressing comfort. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water. So they get up in the morning and rub it out. Oh, there's water. And the water was the sun rays. And the motorbike saw the water on the other side. Not in their area, but on the other side. As red as blood. Now it does not say blood. It says red. What color was that red? It's the color of blood. And they said, this is blood, this is blood, the kings are surely slain. Edom, Israel, and Judah. They have smitten one another. Here they are, they're coming against us. You know what, they just had a battle amongst themselves. They're killing each other. They did a fighting amongst themselves for us. We don't need to fight. Now therefore, Moab, to the spoil. Now, they're putting their weapons down. They would be unarmed and unprepared. Hey, they killed each other. Let's go sack the tents. Let's go grab the cattle. Let's go grab the armor. Let's go grab the money. Let's go loot the area. It's our victory. And when they came to the camp of Israel, they walked right in the midst of where Israel, Edom, and Judah are. Right in the middle of them. Unprepared, unarmed. The Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites. So that they fled before them. <laughs> They're now running. They're not fighting. They have no weapons. Hey, we're just going to spoil. But they went for, forward, smiting the Moabites, even in their country. So they crossed the Moabite land. They crossed the border. The fenced cities didn't stop them. As the Moabites are running from them, they're killing them. And they're killing them in the Moabite land. And they beat down the cities. 
And on every good piece of land cast every man his stone. He grabbed stones and threw them in the land. And filled it. With stones. You can't farm on stones. And they stopped all the wells of water. And fell. That's the only place that word shows up. Past tense of cutting down. They felled all good trees. Only in Ker Hashereth left they the stones thereof. I don't know why that note's there. Howbeit the slingers, that's the only place that shows up. People had slings and rocks, went about it and smote it. So in Ker Hashereth, they didn't destroy the trees, they didn't destroy the city, they didn't stop the wells of water, but the slingers went in with their rocks, broke things, killed people, and destroyed the city. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he's out of luck, he's out of troops, he's in trouble. He took with him 700 men that drew swords, army, soldiers, to break through even unto the king of Edom. I'm going to fight my way through Edom. I'm getting out of here. I'm gone. I'm done. I'm running. But they could not. He's losing. He, and there's no way to run. He's been overpowered by three kings. Then he, king of Moab, took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. You see what they you see what the Moabites were doing? Here's my son to the gods. I need help. And to make you gods happy, I'll, here's my son. And what we read next may be confusing, and there was great indignation against Israel. North. Do you see what Israel made Moab do? Now it says he, he sacrificed his son on the wall. And you assume being on the wall, everybody saw it. My jury of people saw it. And when they see that he killed his son in honor of God, Israel is saying, and all the people are saying, we made him do that. We've got so victorious that he had to kill his son. How ruined and wicked we are. Indignation, anger, resentment against Israel. He's the one that called the battle. And they departed from him. They left King of Moab. They, they're so disgusted, they're so angry, they turned around and left. And returned to their own land. So Edom went home to their land, Israel went home to their land, and Judah went home to their land. The King of Moab, he stole out. Can't believe what Israel made that king do. Slay his own son. 